Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland and this is the first recording of 2020. Hey, so this is Let Me Boy You To Sleep number, I don't know what number it is, 280 something, I think. It's a happy new year, wherever you are. So at this moment, it's new year. It's the new year in England. It will be the new year in a fair few parts of Europe. It will be the new year in Ireland and Scotland and Wales and England and... France, Germany, I think, because it's now two minutes, no, it's 12 minutes past two in the morning. But, of course, at the moment, depending on when you're listening, but as it is being recorded now, it won't be the new year yet in Australia. Or in America. Possibly. Not in Canada either. Or South Africa. Or New Zealand. Or. Mexico. Or Brazil. Or um, Israel, or um, kind of, I suppose, everywhere really, apart from the countries that are close to me. Like, you know, sort of the closest countries really would be. Ireland, um, the Isle of Man, the Isle of Wight, the Guernsey Islands, Uh, uh, where else, France, I think, is France two hours difference? Or is it one hour difference? Germany, I'm sure it's two hours difference. But again, I might be wrong. But of course, as you get further sort of into Russia, it's going to be, I imagine, because it's a, a bit a long distance, isn't it? Because unlike England, um, apart from Ireland, most other countries are just way bigger, you know. So France is huge compared to us. Germany's huge compared to us. Russia's huge compared to pretty much anywhere else in Russia, as far as I'm aware. China. Massive, India, massive. The continental Africa, huge. And of course, the United States of America, absolutely huge. And Canada, if I'm correct, is even bigger than America, space-wise. I think I'm right in that. I might not be, and it doesn't matter, 
work is well it might matter to some people but not to me because I was talking to a friend earlier and he's I think basically his question was did you actually go to school (laughs) which was that was not how he worded it but it was more like don't you know anything about history because he was mentioning famous well you know famous figures from history and that I'd never heard of people that their statues in London I think like in Trafalgar Square or you know some of the the main sightseeing places in London and what I would say also before I say anything only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and happy new year I'm going to keep saying that because I actually feel good saying that so I'm going to keep saying it happy new year to all of you and I genuinely well I'm mild I'll yeah I kind of mean it I tell you I do mean it I, I really wish everybody um, a healthy well and happy year overall you know I hope that good things happen for you you know uh, positive changes if you're listening to this because of issues with sleeping I hope that you get lots of sleep and although I suppose from an ego perspective perhaps or from a wanting to feel I don't know needed or whatever you want it uh, you know the needy part of me wants people to listen to my stuff but at the same time if everybody that listened to my to my recordings only listened once and never had to listen again because you now sleep easier it's like something's changed within you and the process of sleeping is just that that natural instinct that automatic um, part of you that just falls asleep at the correct time the same way as uh, the feeling of hunger or the feeling of needing to go to the toilet or breathing or the blood circulating around your body all those natural automatic processes is exactly what sleep is so you know although it'd be lovely if people listen once and then they didn't have to didn't have to listen again because something's changed within you you know and oh I don't know what it is but I now sleep really well yet at the same time I do want people to listen Um, so it's kind of one of those things which I know some people don't listen just for the falling asleep bit at least that's what I'm told but I had a uh, a message recently saying it was on Facebook asking me to if it was I enjoy your podcast but please stop yawning loudly and into the microphone because it I think it was it's because it off putting or or something like that or jarring or something I forget the, the correct words and it's yeah I don't, I don't know it's
I've always yawned when I make recordings. I've always yawned when I've done live record live sessions with people in the past, going all the way back to 2006 when I used to do group sessions with people. I always yawned at the beginning. It's almost, it's not, um, I'm not purposely, purposefully pretending to yawn because there's no point. I just, I'm trying to keep my yawns quiet now. I'm really self conscious about it. And I don't want to feel self-conscious about anything that I do when I'm making recordings. So I suppose the answer is no, I'm not going to stop. Um, not in a kind of uh, like rude way, but just I naturally yawn. But at the same time, I don't I don't want to be disrupting people, you know. Or interrupting sleep if someone's fallen asleep. It's just it's quite difficult to um, make everybody happy. It's and I, but I do want <laughs> I want to really. I kind of don't want to, but I do want to. Um, the part that doesn't want to is the reality part, which knows that you can never make everyone happy. Um, I remember a very famous comedian he said he said to me I don't know who it was I think it was Alan Francis he said to me 20 odd years ago this is before he was famous but he was well known like in London he was a headliner and it's before he kind of became a TV star and everything in England, I don't know if he's well known in other countries or not. Uh, but he said to me, you know, because I was talking about, um, I was trying to pick his brain a little bit and said, how do you, I think he would give me his advice and I said, well, it's all right for you because everyone loves you when you're on stage. Which was a bit, a bit silly thing to say because the reason they loved him is because he was really, really brilliant at what he did, and he worked really, really hard at it. I didn't realise that at the time. You know, people don't accidentally become really good at something; they work hard at it. And even those with natural talent, it's never enough. Being naturally a fast runner is not enough to win Olympic gold. You have to work really, really hard because no matter how naturally talented you are, someone else that's not as naturally talented who works harder than you will win, will beat you. So it's in a race, I mean. So, but I said to him, yeah, but everyone loves you. And he said, no. In the audience, guaranteed, even when it's you know, I'm killing it. When even when everybody it seems to be enjoying it, there's going to be at least ten percent of people in the audience that really don't like me. Sometimes more, maybe sometimes less, but it's going to be people in the audience that are just going to not get anything I say, especially as they weren't coming to see him. He wasn't famous at that stage. It's very different if, you know, you go to see a... So if you came to see me, I'd just do a Let Me Bore You to Sleep live world tour. And um, you'd be coming to see me because you like me or you like what I do or you enjoy what I do. And you're going to be coming with the expectation of having a really... of enjoying yourself. And, you know, you... You not you won't come along thinking, "Oh, this is going to be crap." What's the point in this? 
But if you didn't know me, or you didn't never heard me before, and I just turn up, or you just walk into a show and think, what's on tonight? Oh, we'll go in here, don't know who he is. You might not like me. You might not like what I do. You might not get it. You might not know why I'm doing what I'm doing. And uh, either do I half the time, so which is fine. And he said, you know, people are coming in. There's, there's men that are brought women in with them that don't want to be there. There's women that have brought men in that don't want to be there. Men that have brought other men that are in there. Women brought women in there. People that have brought family members. People that have brought in work colleagues that don't want to be there. They just come along. And they're not interested. But you don't hear those. You hear the laughter. So it sounds like everybody's in on it. And everybody likes me. But that's not true. And there's something about keeping it real. He was really about keeping it a real perspective of actually don't get too caught up in your own hype. Even though he wasn't, he was a headliner. He was, and he did go on to be famous. And do you know what? I can't even remember what was my point to this story. There was a, there was a point to it. I don't know what it is. But, uh, yeah, you can't please everyone. And you won't please everyone. And I can't please everyone. And I won't please everyone. And not even famous people can f- please everyone. I mean, you know, there's certain... Com- like, I- I'm a really big fan of Stuart Lee. Like, as a comedian. He's a comedian that I used to know years and years ago. He's and he's a brilliant comedian. He's one of the best comedians I've ever seen. And I would go and see him. But I might take someone with me who really doesn't find him funny at all. But that person sitting next to me thinking, what a pile of crap, possibly, is not going to make any difference to the show because most of the majority of people are loving it. So it's kind of about catering for the people. Not, I don't want to be ma- like populist or go like just catering for the majority. Because I do also want to listen to people. You know, someone takes the time out of their day to write me a message saying that if I'm yawning a bit too loud the thing is I don't yawn into the microphone I don't like stick the microphone in my mouth and yawn the microphone is in the same place as it stays in the same place throughout the entire recording that's what I mean But the yawns could possibly be. I can't say the word about yawning. The yawns could possibly be at a different volume, I guess, because they're a little bit louder than. Because I suppose I'm, I would say I'm fairly softly spoken most of the time. Um, softly, as in fairly quiet. And if I did a massive loud sneeze, because you know, you know, you get those sneezes that catch you off guard. And if you're in public, you just hope that you haven't snotted everywhere. You know, that's those, those kind of sneezes. And I would very likely edit that out if I sneezed, or I would try and reduce the volume of that section. So I suppose (sighs) 
I'm not, I'm, I'm withholding my yawns now. It's very uncomfortable. So instead of go like that, that, which is what I naturally do. That's what I would do on my own. It's what I would do walking down the street. I possibly wouldn't do that if I was in a public place, like in a coffee shop or a brothel. You know, just just standard places. I probably would withhold the yawn so it wasn't too loud. Or if I was um, in a job interview. You know, just there's places where you kind of got to um, show a, a little bit of English reserve and English uptightness. That kind of like, let's, let's all hold it in. Let's not just be, let's not just be ourselves and just be natural. Um, because some people sneeze really loudly, don't they? Like really loudly, and I've done I've done some loud sneezes. I mean, I've done some that I really felt good about. You know, like really proper, proper. I mean, I did one in the park. I did two actually, two in a row, uh, a few months ago, and I was with my friend, and honestly it filled the whole park up with sound. It was like a carnival going on. It was just carnival, not carnivore, carnival. And it was such a loud, but it was so freeing because I just let, it's almost let all of the sneeziness out of my lungs, out of my nose and my mouth at the same time and just let it spray. But not on to anyone. I mean, for, for about ten minutes, it did look like it was a bit of rain for a bit, but it was uh, <laughs> the park had its own weather system for about an hour. But I would never do that if there was someone around. I'm very, you know, I've been brought up to put um, a sausage in front of my mouth when I sneeze in front of my face it's just I was brought up to do that you don't just let it sne- you don't sneeze on someone you find um, ideally a pork or beef sausage and you put it in front of your mouth to stop the other people because you don't want to pe- I don't want to offend anybody so that's why I do if I'm I carry, <laughs> I carry a pork sausage around because I know very few people will be offended by that, and so I, I don't want to. I don't want to sneeze onto someone because it is it's awfully bad manners, and I love I love doing. I love the idea that I'm spreading the word of manners of uh, good manners and it feels nice to know that I'm giving something back to the world by educating all those people that may sneeze freely and joyously outward ridding their body of all those germs and all that stuff that's the point is why they're sneezing because the body needs to release it needs to be out of the body out of the lungs out of the chest through the nose cavity and the mouth and those people that like to just let all those germs and bacteria to be released from their body so that they can heal and be well. I like to teach people not to do that because it spreads it. It's, it's, just, it's just rude. 
So what I want to teach people is if you can't sneeze into your palm, try and find yourself a nice farm. So what I mean by this, it rhymes, so it's something you can remember. Um, or if you can't unload into your palm no that's probably not a good term if if you can't release it no um over your hands no okay where I'm going with this is if you can't sneeze into your palm if there's some reason you can't do that then find yourself a farm so what I mean by that is find yourself somewhere open space and sneeze there because if you go to a farm you can let out the biggest loudest most I don't know, ecstatic, joyful, romantic sneezes that there could ever be. And no one's gonna, no one's gonna be looking at you like, hey, why didn't you put your hand in front of your mouth? So none of that. The only problem is when you breathe in and you can smell all the pig manure but that's okay because uh, oh, it doesn't affect me because it's I don't go to the farm if that's something you've got to deal with so it's not really my problem but the thing is <laughs> the thing is It's good to sneeze loudly sometimes, but not at three o'clock in the morning. And ideally not around people because you know, no one enjoys being sneezed on. It's just, I don't think it's, I've never, yeah, I don't think I've ever, ever met anyone or ever seen anyone walk up to someone and say, excuse me, can you sneeze on me, please? It's it's not a, a thing, is it? It's like oh, you know, I've met. <sighs> I've never met anyone with that, you know, with that romantic urge to sneeze. But sneezing. If you hold it in, it's uncomfortable. It's... It's like trying to hold in... Trying to hold in a, a bowel movement once the water's broke, you know? It's, you can't... It, you know, nature kind of has to take its course. So if you hold a sneeze in, you basically sneeze inside your own body, don't you? Like, and it's like, it stays inside your chest. But that's not what's needed. What's needed, it needs to get outside your body. So yeah, some of this actually made sense as I was saying it. But it kind of stopped making sense as I was saying it. So, yeah, I'm not sure. But Happy New Year. So, it's 2020. What have I learned from last year? Um. Um, 
Okay, I can't think of anything I've learned. So what have I done? Well, I've made more recordings during 2019 than any other year so far, I think. I'm pretty certain I have. I haven't counted all of the recordings yet, but I'm pretty sure that I've made possibly 500 recordings. It'll be over f f uh, 100 and it's definitely over 400 recordings so it might be about 500 it might be 400 I don't know I'd have to I'd have to count which is possible because for the last couple of years or last three years or something I have been dating my recordings which is something that I used to do in the early days you know 2006 2007 I've got dates in the title of some of my recordings. You know, Chronic Pain Relief Number 3, uh, stuff like that. And with the date, 14th of July. So, I don't know, I think. It's got to be over 400. They've got to be. They've got to be. Yeah, got to be. So that's what I did. I bought a shed, which is in my bedroom. So that was uh, a garden shed that's in my bedroom. which will be my uh, recording studio for probably f for making the more quiet recordings. Uh, the quieter, you know, like the whisper sessions and maybe some of the longer uh, hypnosis sessions. Maybe some of these as well, but I prefer doing these in my living room with the light on where I can just sort of relax, you know have a little, maybe watch the telly on mute, have it on, on, watch Andre playing around if he's playing around, and you know, just feel nice and relaxed with the occasional yawn, occasional yawn. But at the same time, because sometimes if one person says it, there might be more people thinking it. So if everybody else thinks, can you please stop bloody yawning, then I will take that on board. Because, you know, if I suddenly had so instead of one person saying it, if I suddenly had uh, 300 people saying it, so instead of, yeah, it'd be instead of one person, me ignoring one person, I'd be ignoring 300. So, you know, so it's, no, no, I, I don't want to ignore anybody. I don't, I really don't. 
but at the same time I'm not sure because you know there's no rules to this there's no rule book that I could look at and say well how do I do this how am I supposed to do this because I'm not really doing exactly what other people do I mean some might say yeah well there's other people making relaxation recordings there's other make people making sleep recordings there's other even people doing boring stuff as well which is true but no one does it like me and I don't do it like other people we all do it we all do it different you know everybody does some they do it different it's it's not like building a wall uh, you know I'm talking like a small brick wall outside a house as an example of course some people might do it a little bit different but the the basic structure and method of building that wall you know it would probably be the same with most bricklayers it might change you know a little bit but it's going to be roughly the same kind of process you know but making recordings isn't what's well, for me anyway is not a particularly structured activity as far as I don't know yeah it's a creative process uh, verbally and when you I suppose it's similar in a sense as you get 50 people drawing uh, I don't know a tree with an elephant sit on a branch or some, something like that so every single person would draw that tree differently some would they would draw it some people would paint it some people would use acrylic paints some people would use perhaps uh, oil paints some people might use water paints some people might use charcoal some people might use other stuff that I don't really know about and it's going to be different just in the same way as no one else online is going to talk about my life other than me because no one in the world is living my life I'm not saying that as uh, boastful because my life is extremely boring, which is why I talk about it in these recordings. And I'm fine with that. I am at peace because my boringness can be used for good. So my superpowers of boredom are used to help people. And that feels nice. You know, if I was boring people going into banks and boring a cashier to the point where they just hand over their money, just anything, just please stop talking to me. Here's 10 grand, can you please leave, please? Which, you know, would be a... I don't know what it would be. It's 
So yeah, that's that's kind of that's it for that really. I don't, I don't know what other things I've done this year. I started the new year in doing a, an interview with Edini, who is uh, is a hypnotist as well as being a, a magician. He's made loads of videos on YouTube. And his YouTube uh, is very popular. He was one of the first hypnotists to make videos on YouTube. And his channel goes back to... Probably 2007, I think. You know, I might be wrong, but it's about that. So he's been around on YouTube for over 12 years. And he's got millions and millions and millions of uh, views of his videos. And he gets loads of comments. He's, he's got a very loyal following uh, on his uh, hypnosis videos. So I did uh, an interview with him on New Year's Eve. So I saw the new year in with him talking on a video. And the video is still online. It's still still on YouTube and everything. And so that was good. After that, New Year's Day was, it was okay eventually, but it was... Had a little bit of a weird start. Someone knock on my door asking for money. Someone that I don't really know very well. So I thought, go, go away. And uh, what other things happened? January, February, March, April, May, June, July. Hey, me, 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 me. No, not really much happened at all. I didn't... I went to a, a birthday party in the summer, in August. So that was nice, because I, I got to see one of my aunties that I haven't... I just rarely see her, but she's lovely. So that was really nice, sort of getting to have a little chat with her. Um, um, had a little bit of a bonding session with my niece and we had a laugh and it was the first time because she's now I don't know 10 or 11 or something like that and she's I don't know, I just sort of verbally was able to connect with her, like with humour and and it was nice and it was the first time since she's been born really that I actually felt a, a little bit of a connection, a little bit of a um, not that she was human because <laughs> obviously she's human Um I don't know, just just felt I was just with kids basically is or anyone, it's I'm a verbal person. So I suppose once someone gets a little bit older, they're a little bit easier to communicate with on a on my level, I suppose. So I realised my level, my age level is about 10. That's my mental level, is about 10 or 11 years old. Which is good, because it used to be three. So it's definitely going up. I reckon, I reckon I'm going up by at least a couple of years per year, if not more. So by the time I'm 60, I'd like to be 60.
which some may say is a ridiculous thing to just say out loud but I just said it so it don't matter really it don't matter <sighs> that's one of those yawns that's so unpopular I'm going to leave it in let me know if you don't if if the yawns are a bit new let me know I know some people will say because they like to moan or just for the sake of it but I'm asking genuinely I'm not asking um, for um, complaints because you know basically if you've got a complaint if you're not happy you're welcome to a full refund for this recording and you can get the refund for this recording that you're listening to right now any time between now and the end of January 2020 so you can get your full refund for the cost of uh, this recording if you're not fully satisfied But, but Jason, we don't pay anything. It's free. How can we get refunded for something that don't cost nothing? Yeah, good point. Well, you must be able to get refunded if you're going to complain about it. But Jason, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, you know, I'm letting you know, getting you some feedback. If you're going to get me all tired and I'm starting to drift off and suddenly you start making these stupid noises that sound like fake yarns at an extremely different volume to the rest of the recording, then I'm going to get annoyed with you. Well, okay, I'll try and stop doing it. Well, I'm afraid, young man, trying is not enough. You need to say and promise and do. Sometimes words aren't enough. Action is required. So instead of saying you stop it, how about stopping it? Well, how am I supposed to do that? Well, well, you know what you could do. Well, what you could do, what you could do, I forgot which voice I'm doing, is um, maybe go outside or take up ballet dancing. Or make a massive boat that can carry three of every animal in the world which just happen to be there nearby and willing and able to uh, oh look Coca Cabana Beach New Year celebrations. Huge. It's actually Brazil. So it's Brazil and now it's... Oh, I've got no idea what time it is. But this is now on the news. Rio de Janeiro. Copacabana. Oh, they've got fireworks. Brazil welcomes in a new decade with... Uh, firework display over one million gather against a long Copacabana beach Copacabana is in a banana and the fireworks display is going oh so that's I think Brazil is one of those countries that I sometimes forget about Yeah, it's huge 
and hugely populated. It's a big old country. I don't know how many people live in Brazil. I could ask Alexa. Alexa, how many people live in Brazil? Alexa, how many people live in Brazil? According to the CIA World Factbook, as of 2017, the population of Brazil is 207 million people. So I don't know if you heard that. In 2017, it was estimated that Brazil had 207 million people. So I'll give you an est- I'll give you an idea. In England, we have about 60 million. Yeah. If you fitted, that would be interesting to see, if you fitted England into each country, like the really populated ones, there's a lot of people there. I mean, China, there's what, over a billion. India, over a billion. African continentals, it's over a billion. Russia. I'm not sure about Russia because although it's huge it doesn't the population isn't as big as you know places like uh, uh, India or what's his name Um, I don't know where India Africa America, Russia. So 207 million. If you fitted, I wonder how many times you could fit England and Wales and Scotland. So UK, Britain, whatever you want to call it. If you could fit this country with whatever element, you know, the land, the island, this island that I live on. If you could, how many times could you fit that in Brazil? Or how many times could you fit it in America? Because America, I think, has about three hundred and. 40 to 360 million people live in there. Oh look, there's another firework display. City of Sydney. I thought, I thought Sydney was like 12 hours behind. But they've got their firework display. It's only, I don't know, six minutes past three in the morning. And Sydney have got their display already. That doesn't make sense, does it? Alexa, what time is it in Sydney? In Sydney, it's 2.05 p.m. Okay, 2.05 p.m. in Sydney. So it's not New Year's Day yet. They just showed, oh, maybe they're just showing last year's. Oh. I wonder how many times you could fit the island that I live in on into America. So 
So I'm guessing what, 10 times, 20 times this country in America, maybe more, but even based on 10 times, which will be more than that, I'd say. In America, if they've got 360 million, compared to 10 times 60 million, which would be the population if it was taken over by England, which means there'd be half, yeah, half a, <laughs> how many? I don't know. Can't even remember what I was talking about, but anyway, it'd be good. It'd be really good, and um, yeah. I'm just getting to the point where I'm just really tired. Even though I'm not yawning, I'm just. Uh, uh, so I got my eyes closed, and it would be. It'd be really easy to just drift. And just sleep. Does feel nice.
to yourself. Deserve to be happy. Lots of love. 